Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Hello and welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each episode, I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had when I graduated. And welcome to the 77th episode of the Graduate Job Podcast. And boy, do we have a cracker for you today. Now, I've covered lots of episodes looking at how to get a graduate job, but today's episode is slightly different. Firstly, in that it's part one of a two-part series focusing on the exciting graduate opportunities available with global confectionery and food giant Mars. It's also different in that in this first episode, we aren't focusing on how to get a graduate job with Mars, but instead are looking at what you can expect as a graduate on the Mars Leadership Experience Graduate Scheme. I'm joined by Fabio Ailings, who started as a graduate with Mars about 10 years ago. And he shares his experiences and journey from progressing from a fresh-faced graduate through to his current role as global director for one of their biggest pet care brands. Fabio shares his experiences of 10 years at Mars, from going through the application process for the graduate scheme to the steep learning curve he faced as a new graduate. You'll discover what it's really like to work at a global giant like Mars and gain a taster for some of the roles you could expect to be doing. Fabio also shares his insider secrets for applying for Mars and also reveals the two characteristics that will help you be successful on the Mars Graduate Scheme. Now, no matter if you have ever thought of applying for Mars or not, this is an episode which you aren't going to want to miss. As I mentioned, this is just the first part in my two-part special with Mars, and once this has whetted your appetite for a career with them, stay tuned for next week for my interview with Andrew Sharp, European Head of Early Talent at Mars, who shares everything you need to know to apply for a graduate job with them, from the initial online application to standing out in an assessment centre. A couple of cracking episodes, if I do say so myself. Now, don't worry about trying to remember everything you hear today, as a full transcript of today's show and all the links to everything we discuss can be found over in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash mars. From there, you'll also find links to all of the other 76 episodes of the show, which cover every aspect of getting a graduate job. From help with interviews, assessment centres, to specific companies, to finding a job you love, to dealing with stress as you look for a graduate job. Now, if it's graduate job related, I've got an episode on it. And if I haven't, then let me know and I'll record one for you. Before we start with Fabio, let's have a little message from today's sponsor, who are our friends over at careergym.com. Now, if I said to you, are you ready to do verbal and numerical reasoning tests for the job of your dreams right now? I bet most of you would say no. Well, graduate employers don't hang about. Some of them give you as little as two to three days notice before you have to do the tests. So you need to make sure you are ready and willing to do the tests and start practicing now, which is where Career Gym comes in. Career Gym is the number one place for you to undertake all of your psychometric tests which you will face when you apply for a graduate job with the likes of Mars. No matter what graduate job you're applying for, you're going to have to face some type of verbal and numerical reasoning or situational judgment and working style tests. You can practice these at careergym.com as well as numerical and abstract reasoning tests. They are all produced by testing experts and exactly the same as the ones you will see in the real graduate job tests. You can practice them as you want, or you can do them in exam mode under time pressure, and they all come with detailed explanations and solutions, and you can track your progress and see how you compare against your peers. If you're applying for a graduate job, you will have to do them, so don't put it off. Pull your finger out now and start revising straight away to make sure you don't fall at this very first hurdle. I've been recommending this site for years to the clients I coach, and it comes very highly recommended. And what's even better is if you use the code GJP, you'll get 20% off all of their tests. It's a small price to pay to make sure you don't get rejected at this very early stage. So head over to careergym.com, that's careergym.com, and use the code GJP to get 20% off and start practicing today. As practice does make perfect. Now on with the show. 
I'm very excited to welcome to the show Fabio Ailings, who works at Mars as Global Director for one of their pet care brands, Caesar. Fabio, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Thank you very much, James. Delighted to be here with you. No, no, thank you for having us. And uh, so maybe let's jump straight in. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about your, your background and uh, how it was that you came to join Mars? Of course, yeah, with pleasure. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Fabio, and I'm actually a German-Spanish national, um, but I had the privilege of spending most of my uh, university uh, career in the UK. I, I started doing an undergrad degree at Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge, and then went on to do my master's in marketing and strategy in, uh, at Warwick University. Um, and then about pretty much exactly 10 years ago, I ended up joining Mars on the uh, leadership experience uh, graduate program um, and have really loved it ever since. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about my background in terms of why Mars. Um, I did study marketing at university. I've always been very, very passionate about thinking about, you know, how do you build brands and how do you evolve and develop them in a way that they meet consumers' needs and, and basically make consumers happy. Um, and so when I started thinking about where to where to start working, I, I looked for some of the best advertisers in the world, uh, you know, some of the companies that would own the most iconic brands in the world. And there's obviously quite a few of them out there, but there's not that many that are at the same time also family owned, you know, values driven, have a strong focus on people um, and offer outstanding graduate schemes. Um, and that's one where, where Mars really made it very quickly at the top of the list. There's another element, um, quite funny side story to why I chose to actually start working for Mars. In the end, it was uh, back on campus at Warwick University. It was part of the milk ground. There were some Mars associates uh, on campus talking about the business, and they did bring a lot of free chocolate with them, <laughs> and that sold me in the end. Um, so I went on to apply, and was uh, was very lucky to to be accepted to the Mars uh, leadership experience. Yeah, so it's a sweet tooth. Uh, certainly helps then with the with the application. Absolutely, exactly. So it's ten years ago now, but can you remember the um, the key stages? How did you find the uh, going through the application process? Um, so this is ten years ago. From memory, at the time, it, it all started with a online test, which I believe was was about understanding, you know, verbal reasoning and 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 you know some basic numbers uh, exercises as well um, and then it went fairly quickly into a first interview round which was then followed by by an assessment center um, all of that happened actually at our pet care site in um, in, uh, in Waltham um, and uh, yeah and and I remember it being a fairly speedy process I think all of this happened within the course of a uh, of, of a few weeks, and, and by the end of it, I, I was made an offer to join the business. Um, funnily enough, I, I actually, even though I applied at the time in, in Waltham, I was then uh, asked as part of my first assignment on the Mars Leadership Experience to move to Slough, uh, and I actually ended up joining the, uh, the confectionery business um, down there in Berkshire, um, and have then stayed in the confectionery side of the business for, no for nine years before changing over to our pet care business about a year ago. Um, yeah. Oh, brilliant. And um, being global brand director for Siva. Mm. Yeah, and you mentioned, uh, you know, Mars is such a huge global company. Have you spent the majority of your career uh, based in the UK? Have you um, been able to travel about a bit? No, I've been I've been very lucky to travel about a bit. Um, I, I mean, as you know, from my background, I'm a very international mind, so... I get huge energy out of traveling, but also out of meeting people from all sorts of different cultural backgrounds and working with them on a daily basis. So I started my career um, back in the day in Slough. I was there for three years doing different rotations as part of the Mass Leadership Experience. But when I signed off the scheme um, as, a, as a senior brand manager at the time, I, I actually went and moved to Brussels. Um, where I was for four years part of the European marketing team looking after brands like Snickers, Mars, and, uh, and also Twix. Um, and, uh, and that was obviously a regional role, which, which meant that I was working with you know, colleagues from uh, many of the countries in Europe. I loved that, the travel, but also 
trying to understand, you know, what is it that drives chocolate consumers in, let's say, Italy versus chocolate consumers in, uh, in, uh, in maybe Poland or indeed the UK. So I, I love that diversity and, and, and that um, interactivity. Um, and then after four years in Brussels, I actually went back to Slough. I was uh, the brand director for Maltesers, um, probably one of my favorite roles at Mars so far. What a wonderful brand. Um, we did a lot of great um, work around looking on the light side of disability at the time, uh, so very purpose-driven and, and values-led work. Um, and then since then, I've moved back to Brussels um, about a year ago, where I'm now based, and, and I'm now the global brand director for Caesar, mm. one of our biggest uh, dog food brands in the business. Yeah, and that international aspect, is that, um, was that common across the peers that you joined the company with, or is it something that you, um, you know, as a graduate, you can, you can choose to, to take on it more international roles? Yeah, so at the time, it was um, rather the exception. So you had to, you know, if you, if you wanted to work internationally, you could totally make that happen. I mean, Mars is a truly global business. It, it operates in nearly all countries of the world. We have more than 100,000 um, employees or associates, how we like to call them, around the world. And therefore, uh, you know, m more often than not, it's about um, using some of the international meetings or just picking up the phone um, and, and, and using your network to unlock great career opportunities in countries around the world. Um, so that's how it worked back in the day. I know that the Mass Leadership Experience Program these days actually has some European assignments built into them. Um, and therefore, from the outset, um, you know, new starters and, and, and graduate trainees are being given the opportunity to, to you know, add some great multicultural experience to their experience base, apart from obviously learning on the job um, in whatever function they choose to specialize in. Hmm. And was it a big cohort of people that you, you joined with when you joined the Leadership Experience Program? I think from memory, back in the day, we were about 40, 45 graduates in total, of which about 12 were part of the mass leadership experience. Okay. And you're still in touch with uh, many of them? Are they still with the business? I am, actually. I think uh, so of our, of the mass leadership experience, uh, half of them are still in the business. Um, they've all done very well for themselves. They're now in different management roles or leadership roles, indeed. Um, and uh, funnily enough, because we, we're literally just coming up to our 10-year anniversary with the business, uh, one of them recently sent out a note and said, congratulations to all of us. And, uh, and Mars has actually invited all 10-year anniversary associates to a, a very nice luncheon uh, in November in the, back in the UK. So I will have the pleasure of seeing all of them in one spot and, and enjoying uh, a nice luncheon with them. Can't wait. Ah, oh, brilliant! That's really good, and it's um, that's a really good uh, ratio of people to still be with the with the company. I know it's um, it's just over ten years since uh, I uh, started my uh, graduate scheme. I've now since left, but um, yeah, I don't think there's anybody I joined with who's still with uh, with the company that I joined. So it's a uh, it's a testament to uh, to Mars that you still got half the people there, and uh, yeah, that is one of the the great things about a grad scheme is that you do just have those lifelong uh, bonds with people when uh, when you join together and uh, you know um, start a company together you uh, do often become friends for life absolutely yeah i mean i can't agree more because it's obviously when you're on the scheme it's um it's quite an intense experience you uh, you know you go through a very steep learning curve every uh, you know 6 to 12 months you do different assignments that mean you you're basically starting to learn a whole new job from scratch again um, you get great coaching and support throughout the scheme, but you're also being assessed throughout the scheme very regularly because the idea is to to basically fast track you from being a new starter who knows nothing about the business to a management position in in, in just three years, and that's obviously quite a quite a steep acceleration. Um, but for those of us who who choose to go down that path, it really bonds us together, um, and also it it sets us up for 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 great careers after coming off the scheme, because you've obviously built a great network across the organization. Um, you have a great level of self-awareness because of all the personal development and training opportunities you're being given as part of the scheme. Um, and, and because you've demonstrated high learning agility and, and high flexibility uh, on the scheme, you're also able to then 
uh, demonstrate that as part of internal job interviews that you then do later as you as you you know find your next role and your second back next role and and keep progressing through the organization mm. you mentioned the the steep learning curve there i mean what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you faced as a graduate yeah i think um james the the learning curve itself is is uh, is probably i would say the, the 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 biggest challenge time and time over again i remember when I joined uh, the business uh, straight from university, I was placed into a project management role. Um, and I was made the project manager for our Galaxy brand, which is one of the biggest chocolate brands in the UK. And, um, and I knew nothing about the brand or indeed about how we do business and how we make projects happen. But as project manager, I was finding myself in a room with up to 10 colleagues of all functions of the business. Some of them had been in the business for 10, 15, 20 years and were absolute experts in their fields, whether that is finance or supply or packaging or, uh, or marketing. And, um, and you are in that room and you've just come out of university and everybody looks at you and says, well, you're our project manager. What do we do next? <laughs> and obviously, as a, as a graduate trainee, you have at first no idea at all. But I got buddied up with uh, with a uh, with another mass associate, uh, Chris House, who since then has become one of my best friends, actually, who trained me up on the job. And, and then eventually you're in the driving seat and you're making all those projects happen um, and you learn on the job. And, and and then just when you start feeling comfortable about what you're doing, your next assignment starts and the learning curve starts all over again. So I love that because I love learning and I love growing, but it is a stretch um, because you are right out of your comfort zone and, and you basically just have to, uh, to, to embrace the learning and enjoy the learning. Um, and what I would say is that may sound scary when you just hear it like that, um, you know, being in charge of, let's say, a new product development that might be worth millions of pounds and everybody's looking at you, but the support we give our graduate trainees in the business is outstanding. Everybody gets given a functional body. Everybody has strong line management support and also a mentor. And we make sure that we give all our graduate trainees very regular coaching and training support as well. And with all of that, you're really being placed in a very resourceful environment. Um, and that takes away some of that daunting, the edge of the daunting learning curve and actually turns it into a really enjoyable experience. I was uh, I was feeling scared myself just as you were describing that. Just uh, you know, if I can imagine myself being in that room and all eyes suddenly on me and everyone wanting to know uh, you know what the answer is. But yeah, it must be as you mentioned. It's a steep learning curve is good when you are given the uh, the tools to be able to you know to to go and um, fulfil it properly. I mean, no one no one wants to set you up to fail. So having the the buddy system there and the training in place is um, you know will will help you along the way. It's the best way to learn. I mean, there was a time where the mass graduate schemes were referred to as the ultimate business school or, uh, you know, or the ultimate university experience, really, because you, you get given the opportunity to apply some of the skills you learn at university, but then many newly acquired skills onto real life problems. And if then that real life problem involves creating a new chocolate bar, for example, it is actually really, really fun. Um, and I can tell you, once you make it through that learning curve and the first time you find yourself sitting in that room and people look at you and say, so what do we do next, Fabio? And you say, well, here's what we do. And you realize that you're actually in charge, you're in the driving seat, and, and therefore you're a key player of a big team that works towards creating a new chocolate product or a new pet care product or a new food product that will then some months later hit the shelves all over the country and indeed all over Europe. That is so rewarding and so much fun. Mm. And you mentioned there about um, a thing you've enjoyed. I mean, what's been the the role that you've enjoyed most in your ten years at Mars? Mm. So yeah, I've I've been lucky enough to do lots of different roles in my ten years at Mars. Most of them have been in marketing, which is uh, is the function that I I feel most passionate about. Um, and if there's one role in particular that I would probably sing aloud as as the one I've loved the most, it was being the brand director for Maltesers in the UK. I think anybody who lives in the UK knows Maltesers, um, and most people love Maltesers too. Um, and uh, as brand director, 
I was um, in charge of creating the new Maltesers campaign uh, of, you know, looking on the light side and, you know, just on time for the Paralympics, we actually partnered with Channel 4 and created some uh, pretty uh, iconic ads that were all about looking on the light side of disability. They were some of the most inclusive ads we've ever made. They have been received incredibly well by the general public because we chose not to feature um, people with a disability as, you know, either superhumans or indeed as people that you would need to, to have pity with. We featured them as people like you and I, James, as people that, uh, that uh, have great stories to tell and that love to, to have a good laugh and, and enjoy some Maltesers along the way. And, um, and that was extremely, incredibly rewarding because I noticed at the time that, you know, the opportunity to be able to do purpose-led marketing uh, is, is incredibly rewarding and is something that Mars and actually many other businesses in the industry now do more and more because it is what consumers very rightly so expect from us to have a point of view and to make a difference to the world. And at Mars, we do that passionately. Um, and that's something that, uh, that I've enjoyed a lot. Um, another element of the Maltesers role that I thought was, was fantastic was um, working on some great new innovation, um, many of which have literally just hit the shelves in the UK, like Maltesers buttons or um, Maltesers truffles, and being allowed to taste all of those and be part of the teams developing them, uh, you know, a, a good year before anybody else even knows we would launch them, is uh, is very rewarding and um, and a lot of fun. And I can tell you you are very, very popular with your friends, friends as a result because everybody loves some free chocolate. I imagine. And all that talk of chocolate suddenly made me lick my lips and uh, made me hungry. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to go buy some <laughs> Mars. But I can remember, um, I can certainly remember those um, those uh, looking on the light side adverts uh, that you mentioned uh, for Maltesers. And uh, for listeners around the world who've not seen them, I will link them up in the show notes, which you'll be able to find over at graduatejobpodcast.com slash Mars. And I'll uh, link to those adverts and you'll be able to, uh, to see Fabio's touch there uh, with the adverts that he's created. So, Abby, after all this year's experience in chocolate and uh, confectionery, how's it been then moving to your recent role uh, looking after dog food? Yeah, well, James, I, uh, it did actually feel a little bit like being a graduate trainee all over again, because uh, there I found myself again at the very bottom of a very steep learning curve. Um, our pet food business is quite different to our uh, confectionery business. It is, uh, you know, to start with, our consumers are pets that can't speak. And, and therefore, you know, you, you need to learn how do you actually develop products that are great for the pets, but will also be appreciated by the pet owners. So, you know, in a way, pet care as a category is almost a little bit like baby food because the the pet owners feel incredibly passionate about their pets. They look at them like family members or even babies, and and they're really quite worried about making the right choice for their pets. And therefore, you know, learning how do you market to people within that frame of mind? How do you sell them a product that then goes to a pet that can't speak to them? Is requires a whole new mindset. Having said that. I've, I've loved the change to pet care. It's a hugely emotional category. Um, the stories we can tell, the ads we can, we can write are magical. Um, and, um, and it's also a very dynamic category. It grows well ahead of most of the other consumer packaged industry categories, um, around 5 to 6% globally every year. So it's very dynamic. And it never stands still because as human food trends evolve, so do pet food trends because pet owners want to feed their pets as if they were a member of the family. So as we are more and more aware about, you know, whether that is healthier choices or gluten intolerance or, you know, new food trends, we need to make sure that all of that is also reflected in our pet care products. And, and we take that very seriously and, and follow that very passionately um, because our purpose as Mars Pet Care is to create a better world for pets. And that's something that I find uh, hugely um, energizing. 
Wow, as a as a non non dog owner, I'm uh, I've never really thought about uh, adverts for uh, for dog food, but I'm gonna look at them in a brand new way next time uh, next time we're on the TV. So you're responsible for this globally for Mars, so in all from all different markets around the world. Yeah, so I'm responsible for a brand called Caesar. Um, you might know that from supermarkets. Uh, it's it's the the brand that has a uh, a Westie, uh, yeah. you know, a Western Terrier, and a little tin, and um, exactly in a little tin um, that's uh, quite iconic for the brand, and and we sell it in in most countries around the world, and indeed as global brand director, I am in charge of this brand around the world, which would include you know creating new campaigns, TV ads, packaging design, product innovation, strategy. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And it's something that I really enjoy because yet again, it allows me to work with colleagues from all markets around the world, you know, and, and it allows me to also go and meet them within their markets and learn about their local customs and their local needs. And that can be as diverse as, you know, having one meeting in Japan and then the next day you meet the colleagues in in, in China, and then a couple of weeks later, you, you have a meeting in Russia before heading to North America and meeting with the U.S. American or the Canadian team. And uh, that is something that I find hugely rewarding. And, uh, and again, probably the common theme that keeps me, you know, getting up in the morning and being excited about what I do is that opportunity to never stop learning. And that's something that Mars is really great at. Yeah, and just shows the benefits of being able to work for a you know a huge global company, as you mentioned, that has operations all over the world. As a you know, as a graduate, when you start, you do just have those opportunities um, in front of you that you can take advantage of, that um, people at different companies just will never be able to get to experience. Absolutely, exactly, and it's not only geographic diversity but also business diversity because uh, you know there's a confectionery business which is huge there is our pet care business but even within the pet care business um, you know we we have what we call connected solutions which are basically data-based pet services um, but we also are mit, by now one of the largest um, veterinary services um, businesses in the world and and have more than 60,000 vets and nurses that are part of Mars Inc. globally. And, and therefore, the opportunities for very diverse experiences and careers at Mars are tremendous. And, um, and that includes, obviously, geographic diversity, but also business diversity. And that's something that I really appreciate. So I'm sure that everybody listening, Fabio, is thinking, right, I want to apply to Mars. So what advice would you give a listener who wants to apply to the graduate scheme? Yeah, so I think, I mean, there's probably my, my, my single biggest piece of advice would be be yourself, because if there's one thing I have come to learn at Mars, and in, indeed one of the things I look for when I recruit new starters into the business is that we don't look for, you know, the, the smooth operators that seem to be perfect, but we look for, for real people people that share our values, people that get excited about our purpose, people that get excited about the fact that we're a family-owned business and therefore we don't necessarily think in quarters, but we think in generations. Um, you know, people that are passionate about actually um, not only what we do, but also how we do it. And therefore, I would say be yourself and, and feel out the, the, you know, the people you're dealing with as well. Do you feel, could you imagine yourself working with them every day? Could, do you share their values? Um, you know, is, is what they tell you about them as interesting as what you've got to tell about yourself to them? Because at the end of the day, I believe that you will only be able to build a, a happy and a lasting career wherever you choose to go if you can bring yourself to work every day. Um, and, and therefore, that would be my, my single biggest advice is be yourself and make sure that it works for you as much as it does work for the business you're applying with, because you're going to spend a lot of time in that place. And therefore, it's important that you can bring yourself to work every day. Now, that's brilliant advice. And um, yeah, it is so in, when you tell graduates, you know, it's important that they they do feel the values of the companies they're applying for often when they've got the mindset of, I just need to get a job, any job. And, um, you know, it does 
you do need to you're gonna she said you're gonna spend so much of your life there you need to find a place where you're happy at work and you resonate with the values of the company that you're working for otherwise it's going to be a very long and uh unhappy days you're spending there if you don't um you know if you don't really feel uh, the values of the company you're working for absolutely and and i would add to that you know also make sure you 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 look for jobs or graduate programs that allow you to follow your dreams for me at the time my dream was i want to work on some of the biggest and most iconic brands in the world and i want to work in a corporation that allows me to travel and to you know to to go and and do assignments in countries around the world um and 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 i want to work for a values driven and a values based business and and these were all reasons why for me mars made it very much at the top of the list um and but but everybody is different everybody is looking for different experiences everybody is looking you know for, for different um, choices for their life and for their career and that's where I would also make sure that you know be clear as you apply on what's important to you and and then make sure that you leverage and you use the application project process to understand if where you're applying is actually the right fit because you're not trying to do anyone a favor yeah, but yourself it's, it's your life it's your career and, and you want to make sure that that's something that fulfills you. Excellent. No, that's, uh, that's brilliant advice. Um, and time, unfortunately, Fabio is running away with us, but time for maybe one more question before we, we finish up. Um, you started on the graduate scheme yourself. You will have seen hundreds of graduates working for you on the different projects over the years. Is there one or two characteristics that you think make up a, um, someone for the Mars graduate scheme? Hmm. Um, yes, I think so. So things that stand out for me in great graduate trainees that then go on to actually have um, exciting careers at Mars are things such as people that are very collaborative. Um, Mars is a business where we work in very much in teams where we believe we can get to the best results by working collaboratively, whether that is across different functions or different geographies. So people that are able to create strong relationships with their peers, with the management team, or with anyone that they have to interact uh, with at pace are people that tend to do uh, tremendously well at Mars. So that collaborative and that people mindset is one of the things that stands out for me. The other quality that pretty much all of our management or, or graduate trainees um, bring is curiosity, uh, learning agility, being hungry to just learn new things and, 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 and expose yourself to new challenges, uh, to, you know, to be confronted with with uh, opportunities or challenges that when you start tackling them, you have no idea how you're going to resolve them, but, but you find a way to do so. So that collaborative mindset, James, and um, curiosity are two of the main qualities that I have seen time and time over again in, in some of our most successful graduate trainees. Uh, thank you, Fabio. That's, uh, that's brilliant advice for us to finish on. Thank you so much uh, for your time today and appearing on the Graduate Job Podcast. James, thank you ever so much. It was a pleasure. So listeners, there you go. Many thanks to Fabio for his time and insights. It sounds a brilliant graduate scheme, doesn't it? Challenge, development, responsibility, variety, travel, if you want it, and free chocolate. Now, what more could you want? If that has whetted your appetite, then make sure you check out my next episode, which is with Andrew Sharp from Mars, who looks after their graduate scheme. And he shares everything, and I mean everything, you need to know to apply and be successful. Stay tuned for that one. Make sure you check out the full show notes over at graduatejobpodcast.com slash Mars, where you can find a full transcript and also all of the links from everything we discussed today. On the website, there's also a treasure trove of all of the episodes, which will help you no matter where you are on your job search. Whilst you're there... Don't forget to head on over to graduatejobpodcast.com slash subscribe and sign up so that you don't miss a thing. Now, despite my best intentions, I know I can be sporadic in sometimes getting episodes out to you, so it's the best way to stay up to date with what I'm up to. 
I'm also developing a brilliant course on how to get a graduate job, which will distill down all of my years of coaching into one place. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss all of the launch details for that. If you've got any questions in the meantime, need some help coaching or with an application, then do drop me a line. Again, hello at graduatejobpodcast.com. Right, that is everything from me today. Join me next week, as I said, when I delve into exactly how to apply for the Mars Graduate Scheme. It's a goodie. I hope you enjoyed the show today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs>